We must then continue to monitor our network to ensure that new impediments are removed and any people newly impeded are similarly assisted. So now what does that mean here in the Bahamas? <coughs> General overload. Let's first recognize that we have far less socialism than most Western countries. Thus we have far less government interference. Thank God for that. We don't really want to go further down that road, do we? Yet we've already gone sufficiently far down that road that according to yesterday's paper, the Bahamian government appears to be running an irreversible increase in debt accumulation due to deficit spending and that our debt will continue to grow until the world economy begins to grow sufficiently that our revenue can increase faster than our expenses. This is a further sign to act now. We are not in another economic cycle. Recovery is nowhere in sight. However, by making the changes to the Bahamian banking system I've outlined above, and by separating the Bahamian dollar from the U.S. dollar, we can encourage an increase in foreign exchange revenues, which will help, help us to repay debt and reduce our debt servicing costs. Further government expenditure reductions can be achieved by reducing social program costs when we implement private sector social initiatives. Second, let's recognize that we in the Bahamas already have a very good voluntary sector doing much in these very areas. Yet there's much more to be done. We must acknowledge and support the excellent work already being done in the private sector with adult education in teaching adults who cannot to read and write. This is only a beginning and much more needs to be done. We must ask what more we can do to help those who are already helping. Some four or five thousand youngsters graduate from Bahamian schools every year. Some of those graduates have adequate education and can find work. Others have inadequate and can. To improve our education standards, I suggest we might consider the how to help the Bahamas to benefit from a recent study by Andrew Colson, which showed how private sector education has replaced public sector in many areas and is not only better, but less expensive. This research could help us find a way forward to improve our schools and help future generations. For those who have already graduated and still remain ill-equipped, we could consider initiating an outward bound type of residential school, perhaps on one of the out islands. One such program was recently featured in a local paper. It seems a great step forward. We must do what we can to assist in its development as well as to encourage others and help them all to finance worthwhile initiatives. We can certainly learn from the good work being done around the world by the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme and the Prince's Trust. These are two very effective schemes designed to help the young to improve themselves. There are others, and we must study them all to find the best ways to help our young. I'm sure there are many in the Bahamas who have ideas of their own. In any event, there are few jobs available and certainly not sufficient, even if every youngster had a fully adequate education. So we must seek ways to promote entrepreneurial behavior amongst our young graduates and develop systems to support those who are willing to try. We must appeal to the business community to establish a venture capital fund to support these individual entrepreneurs. We must all be prepared to accept that some will fail and others will succeed. We must build on the successes. I note also in yesterday's tribute that the Bahamas Credit Union League has been trying to meet some of this need, but they face a 50% delinquency rate. We must thank them for trying. However, venture capital should not be provided by debt and using someone else's money. There will always be some failures in venture capital investments, and failures lose capital. How then can depositors possibly be repaid? <coughs> venture capital is a field for equity investors who understand that a 50% success rate can still be profitable, and who are prepared to accept some favors. The government has already begun to meet that need with its own venture capital fund. So too has we the people. Yet government should not be doing this with taxpayers' money. Where is the rest of the private sector? We must ask what can we do to bring manufacturing to the island? What kind of manufactured products will suit and benefit the Bahamas? Can we encourage more and better agriculture? What about olive plantations? 
can we encourage some manufacturing that will help to develop a skilled workforce here in the Bahamas? There are so many possibilities. Now, with respect to the poor, we must find the means to harness the excellent networks that already exist in the churches, the Red Cross, charitable bodies, etc., to identify those in need. And where these networks fall short, we must develop other networks. Then, through our own efforts and contributions, we must find ways to help those identified as genuine, genuinely less fortunate to help themselves where they can. Then they too can help those around them. Where they cannot, we must help to provide for them. We must all help the ill to receive the medical attention necessary. This may well mean both help with the provision of benefits and help with improving our available health services. All of the above we must do through the private sector in both for-profit and not-for-profit ventures. To help pay for some of these private sector provisions, we might establish a society for assistance for the less fortunate. We must then be prepared to contribute to it what we can. The most important thing for us all to remember is that we must see to it ourselves. We must do it. We must not call upon someone else to sort things out. For instance, on the October 29th edition of the Tribune, there was an article about the state of Anglerston Park and the dreadful state into which it had been allowed to deteriorate. Frustrated, frustrated residents demand action, the headlines read. Well, why aren't these residents cleaning it up themselves and setting an example to the community? That's the sort of behavior we need to see in every walk of life. These are just a smattering of thoughts about some of the things we can do to ensure a voluntary exchange society can exist here in the Bahamas. I am certain that amongst this audience and the wider population, there are a great many more and better ideas that can all help to make our society better and freer. The truth is, if we don't do these things ourselves, the government must. That means the cost of the government, which in turn means more revenue is required. Eventually, if we don't act, the government will have to impose further taxes and eventually income tax. Then we too <coughs> will be on the road to surface. To avoid this route, we must shoulder the responsibilities of good citizenship and see to it ourselves. It's that simple, and it's time to start now. In summary, one, the world banking system is likely to suffer, suffer a much larger collapse than that of 2007-2008. Therefore, we ought to take the necessary steps now to strengthen the Bahamian banking system so that it can withstand any future international financial collapse. Two, the banking system needs to be fully protected because we use it to store our money, the money we set aside to meet our family and our business <coughs> budget. We need it stored safely. Safely means both free from theft and free from loss of purchasing power. Three, we can and should strengthen and protect the Bahamian banking system by passing new legislation which returns title of their deposits to depositors and liquidating sufficient bank investments to ensure that banks hold sufficient cash to return every deposit simultaneously. Then the banks will be fully protected and your deposits will be 100% safe. Banks can be more profitable, the government can reduce its interest costs. The behavior four, the Bahamian dollar is currently tied to the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has been falling in value, and as a result, so too is the Bahamian dollar. I believe the U.S. dollar is set to fall precipitously. Do we wish to allow the Bahamian dollar also to fall precipitously? I don't. I hope you don't. And I hope the government doesn't. Five, economic growth could then continue in the Bahamas regardless of the state of the rest of the world. Six, we must focus all of our attention then on ensuring that we develop and maintain a genuine free market in the Bahamas through developing A, private sector improvements to our education, B, private sector improvements to job creation, C, private sector improvements to help for the less fortunate, and D, private sector improvements to our health provisions. Then we can truly set an example to the rest of the world and say with me, it's best in the Bahamas. I'd like to call 
George Fontenelle. German if the stars align. Um, and they were discussing the return to a gold standard. In Bloomberg TV, believe it or not, in a country that's been in negation about the troubles with their currency. Uh, when asked whether it was not a step back going to the gold standard, Mr. Ricards, who's uh, recently published a book called Currency Wars, and it's uh, recommendable. Uh, answer that when you're heading for a cliff, it's not a bad idea to have a step back. <laughs> <laughs> the money and banking institutional framework that we have now is an atavism. It's uh, something of the past. It was designed during the so-called progressive era, uh, an era which instead of progress brought two world wars millions of people killed, and recurring financial crisis as progressively the ties of currencies with gold were severed. The ideas presented by John Tomlinson today, if implemented, would be steps in the right directions towards sound money and sound banking. Thank you very much, Mr. Tomlinson, for introducing to Bahamas these ideas, and I hope that somebody takes the flag. Thank you very much. As a symbol of the gratitude of the National Institute, we present you with Islands of the Sun. Oh!